Hello, everybody. I'm a 32-year-old comedian, which means uh, you're going to learn absolutely nothing in the next 15 minutes. Uh, I just want to let you know. <laughs> um, I told my dad I was doing TED Talks, and uh, he thought I was talking to a bear. So um, that was a good start two weeks ago. Um, but I, you know, I thought I'd share a little bit about myself with you guys, because I, I did something a little different. You know, I, the, the people who organized this me asked me to come and perform. Um, and I know the theme is focused, because I, I, I did something that was kind of both introspective and you know, towards the future in the last while. In the last year, I did some traveling. I went to a few places that I have never been before in my life, and I did this on purpose. And one of the places I went, you guys may know, is Nanaimo, BC. It's just right off the coast. And this is amazing, I'm going to let you guys know, because I speak Mandarin. And Nanai in Mandarin means breasts. Yeah. And Mo means touch. So the city's name is Touching Tits. Yeah. And I was, the lady who showed me around was, you know, wants, wants me to see the city. So she's like, hey, Ed, hey, have you tried the Nanaimo bar? And I'm like, where the hell is this bar? I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if you guys also know this. I know some of you here may speak Mandarin, some of you may not. Um, the word Richmond in Mandarin means yellow face. No, it doesn't. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> you, you guys should be smart. Come on. I like some of you like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, is that right? Now, and I did something different when I traveled, too. I, 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 um, I don't do hotels. I didn't do hotels for the whole year. I did something totally different. I usually stay in hotels, and it's the same thing over and over. This time, I did Airbnb, something a little different. And I don't know if you guys know what that is. For those who don't know, Airbnb is a website where you can go online and rent someone's house for cheap. And while you're saving money, you pay in regrets. That's what happens. Because <laughs> the last one I stayed at, the lady showed my room, walk in my room, there's a cat wiping his bat, butt, butt right on my bed. Just right there, it's right in front of me. And the lady's just like, oh, don't worry, that's, Ed, that's just Charlie. Don't worry about that. I'm like, I don't care what his name is. Can you get Charlie and his chocolate factory on my pillow? Can we do that, please? Can we do that? And every time I pick a place online, I realize this is the introspection part, is I always pick a place that's somewhat in the Asian neighborhood. And I start thinking about, it, like, why do I do this? It's a little weird, right? And I realize, I think personally, I just feel safer. I just feel like if something goes down, the police shows up, I can just blend in. You know what I mean? I just look like family. Because, I mean, that's how I get into Costco. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a Costco card. <laughs> I don't. I just walk up to the door, and a guy be like, sir, do you have your card? And I just point to a random Asian lady, be like, oh, that's my mom. And he's like, welcome to Costco. I'm like, freaking racist, right? <laughs> Works every time. Um, five days ago, I went to Costco. I did the same thing. Walk up to the door. Guy's like, sir, do you have your card? I point to random Asian lady, oh, that's my mom. He's like, hold on, wait a minute. Are you the comedian who tells a Costco joke? And I was like, oh, no, that's some other Asian guy. He's like, oh, welcome to Costco. I'm like, still racist. <laughs> it's amazing. And you, when you travel, you start to realize, and this is what I, you, you understand more about yourself than other people. That's what happens when you travel. Because I realized weird people love to talk to me. I'm like the weirdo whisper. Doesn't matter where I am in the world. Like the first day, first day I was, went out on this venture, I was checking in the airport. You know, just any other day, it was early morning, walk up to the counter, get to get my passport. Guy takes my passport, looks at my passport, looks at me, goes, wow, you're big for an Asian. I was like, wow, you're root for a person. How about welcome to WestJet? How about we start with that? But I checked in. You know, I, I, just, I didn't give it too much thought. You know, I was like, you know, maybe it's early morning, it's the airport. You know, people in the weird mood in the morning, I get it. So I walked in, went to my gate. It's a little early, a few hours early, so I decided I'm going to kill some time. It's too, too early, so I want to get some food. So the kiosks were next to my gate, waiting in line, just standing there. And there's another guy walking along, and he sees me. He goes, hey, Angela. I was like, what? He's like, are you Angela? I'm like, are you OK? Because I'm a guy. And he's like, oh, um, uh, you just look like somebody I know. Then he just walked away. 
He just walked away. You can't end a conversation like that. Because there's a woman out there named Angela who looks just like me. <laughs> and she's OK with it. Like 0% of this should be Angela, guys. Come on. Angela can do better, right? I feel bad. And you know, these things happen everywhere I go. It's not just the airport. It's everywhere. Some, some place as simple as a bathroom. Like one time, you know, I, I was going to the bathroom. It was really busy. You know, it was in a restaurant. And, and, and I don't wash my hands. I was waiting in line for the sink. I guess the guy in front of me, the sensor wasn't working on the sink. So he's trying, trying to get it to work. It's not working. He sees him in the mirror, turns around, stares at me, goes, oh, made in China. I was like, dude, I didn't make it. <laughs> I'm right here with you. I didn't just get off work at the faucet factory. I'm standing behind you doing product control. Are you serious? But then I started thinking, why do these things happen? What is happening here? And I realized, maybe I'm just used to it. I'm just noticing now, because I purposely go to strange places. But maybe I'm used to it. These things have happened in my life. Because I grew up with weird people. I did. And that's why I think I realize I'm used to it. Because my parents are strange. And I, I guarantee a lot of you here are immigrants, and I, you guys must know this. When you move from a country who doesn't, that doesn't speak English, which is where I'm from, Taiwan, to a country that speaks English in Canada, you can pick a new name. You can pick a new English name. So my parents couldn't name themselves anything, anything. So my mom named herself Candy, like the dessert. And my dad named himself Smiley, like a freaking idiot. <laughs> yeah, Candy and Smiley. <laughs> Are we Smurfs? Why? <laughs> Why do you do this family? I don't understand. And you know what? If the name makes sense, I get it. The name makes no sense. Smiley never smiles. My dad never smiles. My dad's the most terrifying guy I've ever known in my life. He puts fear in every aspect of my life. Every aspect. That's how he rules the house. Something as simple as eating. Something you guys do every day. Because every time we have dinner, he'll remind me that every grain of rice I leave on the table will become a pimple on the face of my future wife. <laughs> yeah, isn't that messed up? <laughs> that is so messed up. Because I have pimples on my butt. <laughs> so what the hell did my wife do with her rice? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> it's too much. And you know, all these things, I started to realize I, I did a lot of weird stuff when I was a kid. You know, things that I never knew that were weird. That's why I'm starting to notice it now. Like, like I said, I speak Mandarin. And some of you are going, well, why is that weird? It's a weird language. It is a very weird language. Because you guys must, you know, we're in Vancouver. You guys must know there's people who speak Mandarin. So you hear this. And I want to let you know the most common phrase in Mandarin happens to sound like the most offensive word in the English language. <laughs> yeah. You guys know, right? The, the, the phrase is that one. In English. In Mandarin, it's pronounced nega. <laughs> yeah, it sounds just like the N-word. And you know how awkward that is? Because I took my dad to New York last year, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> We're going through the city. He's seeing all these landmarks on the bus. He's going, nega, 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 nega. <laughs> I'm like, we're going to die. We're going to die in Brooklyn. <laughs> So this is what I did. I said, Dad, you got to talk to me. Stop talking out loud. <laughs> talk to me. So I was like, I got to say something. I was like, Dad, OK, all these places you want to go, where do you want to go? Tell me. Tell me where you're going to go. So my dad likes to do this thing where we speak half Mandarin and half English. So he's like, oh, uh, nigga, please. I was like, oh. <laughs> this is. This is blowing up right in my face. I did weird things my entire life, my entire life. Every, moment, every day of my life, as a, as, a, as a child, my parents made me play the piano. Every day, every single day. And if we go out in public, if there's a piano, they'll make me play it in front of strangers. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're trying to prove to the whole world we're truly Asian, you know what I mean? So I brought it with them recently as an adult, because I want to know, because I, I realize nobody does this. My friends don't do this. I don't know anybody who does this. I know people play the piano, but they don't make me do it in front of strangers. So I brought it with them. Why did you make me do this? Why? And I thought they didn't have reason. They did. They had a rationale. They told me that if you play a musical instrument, people will like you more, which is interesting.
because my neighbor just bought a Trump head. <laughs> and I freaking hate him. <laughs> Every night at seven. I don't know. It's weird. And you know, I just, I, I'm just happy that I'm older now. Um, looking back is, because I was an awkward teenager. I was, I, I did a whole bunch of awkward things. I had, I had long hair, you know, I was lanky. Um, I was a goth, yeah. You can't be an Asian and a goth. <laughs> that makes no sense. Every time I'm trying to put on makeup, my dad thought I was turned to a geisha. You know what I mean? That is my life back then. And there's always a moment, I, and I, I've been searching. As, I was, as I'm on the road, I'm searching. Where's that moment in my life where everything just took a turn? What was that moment in my life? And I realized it was a moment the day before I immigrated. Is I had a childhood pet. I had a turtle for the longest time. And when you immigrate from a country to a different country, it's a lot of paperwork to do for a reptile. So I had to let it go. So I remember I went to the park. I threw the turtle in the lake, and it just disappeared. It didn't flow, it didn't swim, it was gone. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was so angry, I leaned over the edge and went, goodbye, turtle! <laughs> and six years later, in biology class, I learned there's two types of turtle. <laughs> the aquatic that can swim, and the terrestrial that cannot. <laughs> and that was the same day I realized, I murdered my childhood pet! And while it's withering away in the water, I leaned over the edge and yelled like a psychopath, going, Goodbye, turtle! I hope you like drowning. That was the moment. And I realized, you know, that's ever since that moment, I've been doing weird things. And I, I get weirder and weirder as time goes on. And I, you know, because I'm part of the family. Come on. I can't, I can't dodge that. You know? Family is where you come from. That's what you're going to be part of. And I'm not standing here saying I don't like my family. I'm just saying sometimes it's a little tough to understand. You know what I mean? Because family always wants to do things that you never understand. Like over holidays, my brother suggested, for fun, we should give each other nicknames. I'm like, why? <laughs> How is that fun? You know what would be fun? If we give each other money we owe. That would be fun. <laughs> That's 200 bucks. <laughs> I like it back. Please. And sometimes your family goes so deep that you don't even realize how deep it goes. I have a big family. I have 15 uncles and 12 aunts. So when I started looking at it, I realized that's, you know, the weirdest never ends. Because I just met a cousin for the very first time in my life. I never met this guy before. I'm just starting to get to know him. His name is Peter, and his last name is Pan. <laughs> because my aunt and uncle are geniuses. Peter Pan. What is happening? So I, I, I brought up my uncle, because I was like, hey, why did he do this, right? I, the musical instrument thing, my dad, he must have a reason. So I brought it with him. Every time I bring it up, he won't answer. For some strange reason, he'll deflect. He'll just ask me a question instead, so he doesn't have to answer the same question. He's like, Ed, you know what? That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you think Peter is having sex? That's he asks every time. And you know what? I'm going to put all my money on no. Because when it comes to dating, Peter Pan is going to Neverland. Okay? <laughs> That's where he's going. <laughs> he's not going <laughs> to. His name's Peter Pan. Come on, guys. I don't know. And I'm part of that family. I, I feel like, you know, I, I am. I, you know, and ever since I was young, I, I can't escape it. Because every time I go to the library, I have to use my dad's card when I was a kid. I couldn't use my own card. I was a minor. And that, you know, that's when I think back, that's the moment I realized I can never escape this cycle. I just got to accept it. Because every time I go to the counter, lady will scan the card, and she'd be like, uh, are you smiley? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm Angela. Just give me the books. OK, I can't, <laughs> can't deal with this. No, and that, that impacts your future. I realized, you know, really, because now I'm thinking, because no, I, just, I just got married a year ago. And um, now thinking back, you know, through these travels, I realize I got to build a future now. And that's, the, your past is going to impact where you go in the future. So now I'm starting to think, what am I going to do? Now, I know some of you are looking at my hand, because I'm moving my hand a lot, is where's your, where's your ring? Where's your ring at? Are you just making this up so you can tell a joke? No. This is, again, the past coming to play. Right, right in front of your eyes. I can't wear a ring because I'm allergic to metal. I am. It's been like that ever since I was young. I'm allergic to a lot of stuff. I can't touch a lot of stuff, eat a lot of stuff. Um, for example, I'm allergic to alcohol, 
marijuana, and nicotine. Yeah. You know what's the diagnosis? Mormon. No. <laughs> That's silly. No. That's dumb. This is the truth. I'll tell you guys, this is the total truth. It happens every time when I go out, especially my friends. Every time we go out and we have a good time, I have to drive. By default, I'm the designated driver every time. And everyone who hears this goes, oh, Ed, that's, I feel so bad for you. That sucks. You never got to have any fun. But you know what? Deep down, I think it's amazing. It is. Because it's the first time in history where humanity came together and believed an Asian driver is going to keep him safe. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking stereotypes. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's definitely impact me, you know, because I'm starting to think, you know, what type of parent am I going to be? Looking at my, you know, my past and my parents, who am I supposed to be, you know? And some of my friends brought up the, the concept, of, Ed, why don't you adopt, you know? Get them pre-made. Um, <laughs> which is a weird way of putting it. And some of them are like, Ed, you can get them older so they won't cost as much money. I'm like, I'm not buying a car. What is happening in this relationship? But I thought about it, you know, and I, I really, it's, it's probably, a, you know, it's a, it's a great thing. If anyone of you here adopt or are adopted, you, you're a miracle. You're doing miracles. You're making miracles happen. Because adoption is good for the kids and the parents, for both, parents, both sides. Because for the kids, they have a family, right? They grow up with a family. Something they're never going to have. For the parents, it minimizes all fighting. All the fighting. Because I can adopt a kid. He could do something wrong. My wife may say something like, you're just like your father. And I'll be like, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not your father. <laughs> you're adopted. Now I won't put it that way. No, because I, I think part of me is there's always that fear. You know what I mean? I think there, there is a fear. Is, am I going to be good enough? You know, am I going to make my kid weird? Is that what's going to happen? You know? And so you, you, look, you, look, at your, you look at your parents because they're your best role models. They kind of inform you as what you should do and should not do. And so I look at my dad. My dad taught me everything in riddles, like a weird Asian wizard. <laughs> That's what he was like. When I was a little kid, this is what he told me. This is the whole truth. As I was growing up, he told me this. He told me there's three things in life you don't lend out of people. Just three, nothing more. That's your money, your wife, and your books. So for the longest time as I was growing up through the ages, I was trying to figure out the answer. There must be a meaning in this, right? Money, wealth, wife, love, books, knowledge. So I was 16, and one of my dad, I was like, hey, dad, is this what you mean? I think I figured it out. This is amazing meaning. It's a great message. Did I get it right? Did I get it right? He's like, no, it's because your mom hides my money in the books, and she won't tell me where it is. I learned nothing. <laughs> yeah. And you know, your, your parents impact you in different ways. It does, they do. And you know, in ways that you don't even realize that they do. Because um, I realize I'm scared of things I wasn't scared before. Like I'm scared of ghosts now. Ghosts. At 32 years old, is my newfound fear. Ghosts. I've never been scared of ghosts. And most people are scared of ghosts because they're creepy. Right? That's why people are scared of ghosts. That's not my reason. Because after all these years, I realized I'm scared of ghosts because if ghosts exist, there's a chance that one day my parents might be ghosts. Yeah, and there's no way I can deal with that. Because I don't need a ghost that's going to scare me and make me do homework afterwards. You know what I mean? I can't deal with that. And they're going to be Asian ghosts. So they're never going to leave. Never. You can't even do an exorcism. Because they'll just pretend they don't speak English, right? I <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that impact you. You don't even realize it happens. And, you know, so then I'm starting to be, okay, maybe I just need to, maybe I need to forget all that stuff. That's why I, I told myself. Maybe I just need to understand. If I didn't understand myself, maybe I can combine everything that happened to me and make it into the future. That's what I realized. I'm going to forget you know, what happened to my parents, stuff like that. I'm just going to take that, use it as something for the future. So I started to understand, well, who, who am I? What, who am I then? So this is what I did. I realized if you look at the things around you, you guys go home today, everything around you reflects who you are. That's where you're going to understand who you are. That's why I went traveling, because everything I touch reflects who I am.
And I realized there's one thing at home that really reflects who I am. That's my pets, my dogs. And you, if, if you have pets, you'll see that too. Because I've been training my dogs for three years, and I'm pretty sure one of us is retarded. <laughs> I don't know who. <laughs> People come up to me and say, hey, Ed, can your dog do any tricks? I'm like, yeah, she can crap on my bed. It's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, this, and I realized this, my dog is always going to be the way it is because it reflects who I am. And I, 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 I did this weird thing where I let my dad babysit my dog. I thought, you know what, the dog's weird, dad's weird, <laughs> cancel each other out, right? So I came out one day, the dog's on the couch, just passed out, just gone. I was like, dad, what did you, what did you feed the dog? He's like, pizza. <laughs> I'm like, Pete, you fed the dog pizza, why would you feed the dog pizza, dad? He's like, Edward, animals love pizza. They eat pizza all the time. I'm like, okay, fine. The name one animal that eats pizza every day. Name one animal. He's like, Ninja Turtles in your face. <laughs> He's got a point. I'm just afraid I'm not healthy enough to have kids. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's another thing. Because uh, I, I'm trying to help myself. I went to the doctor, and uh, my doctor told me that I should go to the gym in the morning. So I told myself I should get a new doctor. It's just, <laughs> I'm not going to go. Let's be honest. This is, and, you know, physical health is one thing. Mental health is another. And that's, that's I think, all this introspection is trying to me to figure out, because if you're happy, if you're balanced, everything will turn out okay. And, you know, in my family, sometimes I think we tend to skew one way or the other mentally. Because my brother is super paranoid, my younger brother. Um, he's 26. Um, and until this very day, this is the total truth, he can't pee in a public bathroom because he, he thinks somebody's going to run in and flick his butt. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that outrageous? That's ridiculous. Because just because I did it doesn't mean everyone else is going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for 10 years. Not a good person. But uh, yeah, just, you know, so... And myself, I, I panic a lot, too, you know, just like my brother. I'm not paranoid, per se. I just panic. I drive across the border a lot in the United States, um, you know, to do shows. And I realize when you change up a routine and things, I just crack. The border guards always ask the same question. Last time I stopped my car, they changed it up. It wasn't the same question. I stopped, stopped my vehicle. The officer is like, sir, do you have any heroin in your car? And I never heard this before. So I panicked. So I was just like, uh, why? Do you want some? Just the worst answer ever. Even the border guard was like, wow, that's a new one. What do we do with this information? <laughs> and after my year of travel, I realized, you know, my panic dropped. My, my paranoia, you know, is non-existence because, you know, I, I, I've seen people, I met people, and, um, and one thing, you know, interesting happened is I went back to my homeland, my motherland, um, Richmond. No, <laughs> I went back to Taiwan, and everywhere I went in that country, people recognized me. And that wasn't because of comedy, it's because of the viral educational video in Taiwan that teaches people about sexual assault. And I looked just like the guy in it. So I felt so bad, I was so embarrassed. So I told one person, I told my brother. My brother was like, "Eh, this is hilarious, we gotta find this guy. So he Googled and I found him. Apparently this guy was born a woman. When he got older, he got a transition, gone to acting. And the minute I heard this in my mind, I was like, oh my God, I found Angela. <laughs> and thank you guys so much. Take care, everybody.